something that's just a little maybe too good to be true, something that looks a little too great, like, uh, that light looks a little too right uh, for this to be outside. And the metadata says it's at noon, and this looks like some definitely some evening light. We need to talk about that. So my advice, even for viewers to um, evaluate other images, is, is to really look at you know how and what event is being represented to represent that that article. You might think like, well, you know, this this picture of a protest is of a moment, but there are other things that are to it. You know, it's not just people in the street uh, chanting, though that's an, an extremely important part of the story. It's only a part of the story. They have to look for the source. They have to understand what sources they trust and not just sort of just take for face value some image that pops up, certainly, on Facebook, it's just, it's become obviously out of control. There's a picture that was quite famous for a while. It's a Syrian, supposedly a Syrian kid at the graves of his parents killed by a government airstrike. And the photograph was actually from Saudi Arabia from something else like 15 years before. And the thing is, if you have multiple light sources in the picture, that's a red flag. If you have a shadow that appears in a place and other things that should be reflecting similar shadows, they're not there, that's a red flag. These are all like heavy handed touches that are immediately red flags. Because if you see that, you say, this feels a little over-processed to me. And that would be a situation where you might ask for a raw file. Uh, when I worked at the LA Times last year, a bunch of photographers went to the beaches while they were uh, closed down and photographed how many people were at the beach. And there were a lot of accusations of photographers using long lens to compress the images to make it seem like there were more people than there actually were and the people weren't spread out. People had a lot of mistrust for the government and news last year. So I think that kind of bled into how people were reading the world. That being said, I do think that people kind of take things at face value and don't really want to look into things. And I think pictures are a really easy way to get that information without having to really think about it. When you see an image, you never really know what went into its creation. You don't know where the photographers were coming from, where their heart is, what their like ethical compass and moral framework is. I look at the way that photographers, you know, edit their images uh, and specifically if they choose to keep it in color or black and white. That is a very, very big choice and it's an intentional choice that photographers make. When we think of like classic photojournalism, a lot of times we think of black and white. And so photographers put things in black and white sometimes to make things more dramatic, to make things more gritty. We need to think about the five whys. Why, 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 why? Why do we do anything? Why, why do we react to these things the way that we do? Am I moved by this image because it's in black and white? Uh, or am I moved by this image because what I'm seeing in here is so powerful?